Springvale, the very first town that you encounter upon emerging from Vault 101. This is the very first peek that players get into the capital wasteland and to what's to come. But what secrets and lore lie within this dilapidated town? Well, my name's Lone, but today I am the Law Wanderer, and we're going to be answering that question in this pilot episode of a new series I've been experimenting with. Let's do it. So obviously Springvale is a town that was hit incredibly hard by the nukes that were dropped as part of the Great War. Look at the houses here. They are absolutely ruined. You might notice that around the capital wasteland, there are indeed buildings and structures and houses that are in pretty good shape. In fact, there is actually a house in the distance over there that's in pretty good shape. But these ones here and those up on the hill over there are completely destroyed. Whoever was living here before the Great War would have been killed instantly, pretty much next to no survivors. So here's something really interesting. In Springvale in one of the houses, we can see a cellar door that is completely locked. It can only be opened, of course, as it says there, through the use of a key. It's unlike a safe or a locked container elsewhere in the Capital Wasteland that can be opened using a bobby pin. This, as the game goes into my lovely cinematic view, is completely different with this cellar door. The reason why this is the case is because this door can only be opened when you're playing the Fallout 3 DLC called Broken Steel. So what exactly is locked within this cellar in this house in Springvale? Well, in Fallout 3, there is a group or a faction called the Apostles of the Holy Light, and they created a monastery inside of this cellar called, aptly, the Monastery of Holy Light. Unfortunately, at this stage, we cannot explore to see what other secrets lie within, but it's something that we can come back to at a later date. I think this scene here is quite poignant in Springvale. It first shows to players how before the Great War, this was a happy little town in America. This was the ideal town, the American dream, where kids would just play in a playground. You have the tricycle there, you have a slide, you have the seesaw, which are all now either rusted, dilapidated, or completely broken. And unfortunately, these, these items exemplify and showcase the harsh realities of the Great War and what has happened afterwards. The town is completely abandoned, the houses are completely useless, and this once thriving playground that would have had the loves and happy smiles of young children now goes unused. So what a sense of contrast it is to be in a town like Springvale where every single other house is completely destroyed, yet we encounter this little shack here that seems to have survived or at the very least was restored at some point. It's presumed from looking from the outside in that there is someone living in this house. So let's go see who actually lies inside. Open door to the small ranch. So, oh, we've already encountered someone. You? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? So, instantly, who is Moriarty? Let's ask the question. Colin Moriarty, the owner of Moriarty Saloon in Megaton. That Megaton. Sack of shit is convinced that I'm some crazy junkie who stole money from him. So, clearly, Megaton is a nearby town that has someone called Colin Moriarty. Um, 
it seems that we have a number of options here. If our speech check is high enough, we can just get all the caps from her and we can tell Colin Moriarty that he's, she's simply gone. But I want to know her side of the story first. Look, I used to work for that slob doing, you know, favors for guys. Well, I got sick and tired of it. I told Moriarty I'm taking my share of the caps and leaving. I even slept with the pig to seal the deal. Next morning, he tells me I couldn't leave. So I bolted. I took my money and ran. Now he's branded me a thief and a junkie and sent his cronies to find me. I guess I need a new hiding place. So, clearly, Silva was a prostitute working at Moriarty's bar in Megaton. And Moriarty has literally done the dirty on her, slept with her, and if we believe her story, she is in the right here, genuinely wanted to escape. Did she steal Moriarty's money? I mean, we don't know, but let's see how far we can go with this, right? Keep your caps and tell Moriarty you're gone. Look, just give me some of your caps and I'll tell him you're gone. This option here will net you 300 caps, right? This one here, if you're successful, will net you 400 caps from silver. Look, I don't know who you are. And it failed. I'm not just handing over my life's earnings to you. So if we get some of her caps... You do that for me? Here you go. Thanks, kid. You're all right. 300 bottle caps obtained from silver. Very interesting backstory. She's going to live here safe in, Meg in Springvale. Um... Not sure if she's not going to get any more visitors um, coming to her house, which is literally, again, the only well-constructed house in the town. But for now, she can live in peace. So moving on from Silver's house, we find the next piece of important lore in Springvale. We found a letterbox that contained a letter from Vault Tech. This is of course relevant because just up the hill was Vault 101 that we escaped from. So let's read this letter and see what Vault Tech has to say. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Gomez, Congratulations on your family's recent inclusion in the Vault 101 community. You will find outlined in your application materials a full review of rules and procedures related to preparing for shelter in a vault -Tec facility. So let's break that down just for a second. Your application materials. This suggests that at least when it came to Vault 101, there was an application process in mind. vault -Tec and the US government would let people apply for inclusion in these very exclusive number limited vaults. Each of them could only house about a thousand people. So it seems that this person, this family, Mr. and Mrs. Gomez, that lived here in Springvale, applied and as part of the process were actually successful in moving into the vault. You come out later to find that Gomez is actually now a security officer, or at least his descendant is a security officer in Vault 101. But it's very interesting how stringent vault -Tec was in pre-selecting the inhabitants of the vaults because they each have an experiment. So whoever was selected to be a part of the vault was selected for a specific reason. We may never find out why exactly Mr. and Mrs. Gomez were selected, but at the very least, we came to know their, their descendant. So continuing on with the rules and procedures of vault -Tec in this letter, they continue by stating that vault -Tec provides all clothing, bedding, and accommodations for residents. Personal belongings must be reviewed and approved of by an authorized vault -Tec heremetics technician before such belongings can be delivered to your reserved quarters within the vault. In the event of an emergency entrance to the vault, no personal belongings will be permitted uh, beyond the main door of the facility. Quick point here. This is obviously because they didn't want any outside contraband to kind of compromise the experiment that was taking place within the vault. As we know, Vault 101 was a vault that was tested, but that was testing rather, prolonged isolation inside of the vault. So if there was any kind of item that would allow people to escape from the vault, such as a gun by killing the overseer, for instance. vault -Tec obviously did not want that. So that's a very important point of law that we need to bear in mind. Continuing, 
All Vault residents must attend an orientation seminar. If you do not attend such a seminar as part of the application process, you must make an appointment with your Vault Tech representative. Seems normal enough. Continuing on, in the event of a Vault activation, whether actual or drill, Vault Tech will sound a siren audible in the immediate vicinity of the Vault facility entrance, and residents will be contacted via holotape message at the phone number provided in their resident profile records. Please report promptly to Vault 101 to await admittance and processing upon such a notification. So another interesting point here, because as you know, most of the vaults in Fallout were actually underpopulated. And it seems that at least when it comes to Mr. and Mrs. Gomez, they did listen properly to the siren that took place. Most of them didn't. Most American citizens didn't because there were so many drills that were conducted to prepare people for the onset of nuclear war that when the actual sirens were alarmed, not many people actually listened. Now, mind you, when it comes to Springvale, it is so close to Vault 101 that there was no way people didn't hear those immediate sirens. But at the very least, Mr. and Mrs. Gomez would have gotten that call and they would have been alerted to the fact that this was a real um, nuclear event that was happening. And continuing, vault -Tec looks forward to having you and your family as valued residents. Be sure to prevent this letter to your vault -Tec representative to receive your special commemorative vault boy bobblehead toy. Sincerely, vault -Tec Department of Public Relations, Washington, D.C. Now, of course, the Mr. and Mrs. Gomez didn't receive their vault boy bobblehead toy because the letter is still in the mailbox. Now, you might wonder why the Gomez's even really knew that they were accepted into the vault if this letter is still in their letterbox. Of course, again, when that siren went off, they were called, um, and they would have heard the siren as well, but they were called to be uh, informed that they were successful in their application to the vault. So they didn't necessarily have to read or take this letter. But very interesting stuff about the bobblehead toy. Now the next point of interest here, of course, is Springvale Elementary. Now, this isn't technically Springvale. They're treated as two different locations in Fallout 3. If you actually go to the world map, you'll see Springvale School is a different location to Springvale. So if we were to do Springvale School and uh, investigate inside for all the secrets and lore, that would be in a different episode. But it's of note that there is, of course, a bunch of raiders that have taken place, taken camp within Springvale Elementary. The reason why they are there is because those in Megaton that were well armed actually pushed back these raiders to Springfield, uh, Springvale rather, elementary. Springfield is from The Simpsons. But we aren't going to explore that further because, again, different location, but there is still some things to see in Springvale proper. So Springvale actually has a water tower here that before the Great War would have provided water to all of the residents and perhaps any nearby towns. But thanks to the Great War and thanks to the radiation that settled in afterwards and the constant ongoing fallout, um, this water tower is completely irradiated. You try to drink from this, you're going to receive radiation poisoning. Um, it's interesting that there are so many water sources in Fallout 3 that are irradiated thanks to the Great War. You'll come to see that that forms an important plot point uh, in, in the main quest of Fallout 3 when it comes to Project Purity. But at least for the time being, it hasn't gone unnoticed by us that we can't have any clean water here from this water tower, which presumably should have clean water. And there's even another point where we get closer to Megaton, where we find someone begging for water, but they won't really take dirty water. The theme of water is strong and pervasive in Fallout 3, and it all starts with this water tower. So we are on the hill on Springvale, and that pretty much covers it for every piece of lore and every secret 
in the town. If you enjoyed this episode of Law Wanderer, please let me know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for me to improve this series, I would love to hear them too. Until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourself and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.